Today, we'll go through the absolute best tool within Thinkorswim to help us better manage risk. I've actually talked about this tool already in the past, but today we're going to learn how to use it to manage overall portfolio risk rather than just an individual trade. You might already know the tool that I'm talking about, but in order to find it, we will simply come up here to the Analyze tab, and we'll be specifically talking about the Risk Profile page. Now, for those of you who might not be familiar with this page, the absolute most basic use of the tool and what we discussed in the last video is to see how the positions you hold or even hypothetical trades are going to play out over time. So essentially, we could see how things like the stock price going up or down or time passing or even volatility changing is going to affect the value of our positions or the ones that we're analyzing. The more advanced use of the tool, and what we're going to talk about today, is how we can use it to manage overall portfolio risk and even bait away our entire portfolio against an index. That way we can manage everything all at once rather than trying to micromanage each individual trade. Now I would really recommend you watch my previous video first if this is your very first time seeing this tool, since I'm going to go ahead and assume that you have at least a base level knowledge of how to use this thing. However, just as a quick refresher, if we were to come down here to the very bottom of the risk profile, we will first find all of our open active positions as well as our hypothetical trades. The active positions, or the things that we actually hold in the account, are going to have a black background and it's going to look pretty much identical to how it looks on the monitor page. The hypothetical trades, on the other hand, are going to be highlighted in either red or green depending on if you're buying or selling this particular trade. So in this case, since I've got Apple pulled up in this account, it looks like I do have a current open position on Apple right here. It's telling me from left to right, I've got one of the Apple 21 October 155 calls. But then right below that, I also see a hypothetical trade to sell two vertical call spreads, it looks like. Now, besides the position section, if we were to look right above that, we also have the price slices as well, which are simply going to display our portfolio Greeks and a rough profit and loss if the stock were to go up or down to a set price. So coming over here to the left hand side of those price slices, we can see the current price of Apple right now is 142.57. And it looks like if Apple were to go up 10%, it would go up to $156 a share. And if it were to go down 10%, it would be at 128 a share. To the right of those values, we can also see what our portfolio Greeks would be if that were to happen. So our current Delta, Gamma, Theta, Vega, as well as our PL open. So how much would we be up or down if Apple went to those prices? So at the moment with my current Apple positions, as well as hypothetical trades, if Apple went up 10%, I would only be down 263 bucks. If it went down another 10%, I'm going to be down 661 bucks. I'll actually be diving pretty deep into this section in just a minute. But before we get to that, if we were to look above the price slices, we can also see the risk profile graph. This is really just a pretty picture of what we were just looking at with the price slices. It is simply a visual of our profit and loss on this particular position. So in the case of Apple, how much are we going to make or lose if Apple were to go up or down? If time were to pass, if volatility were to change, that's what this graph is showing us. Now, of course, all of that is incredibly useful and definitely useful if you're learning a brand new strategy. When I was first learning things like butterflies or verticals, it was really helpful to see exactly how those types of trades are going to move over time. But what I really love about this tool is not how I can use it to manage just one position at a time, but my entire portfolio. Now, in order to actually do that, in order to actually manage my entire portfolio from this screen, there are a couple things we have to do first. The very first thing we have to do is come down to the very bottom of the risk profile graph and find the tab mark single symbol. That is simply saying I only want to manage one symbol at a time. And in this case, we're managing Apple only. However, if I were to click on that, I could actually flip it over to where it says portfolio beta weighted. And that is exactly what I want to do. You'll now see that I actually have all of my open positions down below, not just the ones I have against Apple, but everything in this account. So right up here at the top, you can actually see I've got a hypothetical, it looks like iron condor against American Airlines. And if I were to scroll down a little bit, it looks like I've also got my Apple positions, what we were just looking at. And then scrolling down below that, I've got quite a few more positions as well as another hypothetical trade against Microsoft. 
So that's great. We've got our entire portfolio down here and even a few hypothetical trades. But what are we comparing that against? If we were to come up here to the very top of our screen, you'll actually see I still have Apple in the list right here. That actually means that we are comparing our entire portfolio against Apple. We are saying if Apple were to go up or down, this is how my entire portfolio is going to change in value. So obviously that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And we'll typically want to use an index to beta weight our portfolio against. Most of the time I like to stick with the S&P and specifically I use SPY. So let's go ahead and throw that in there. SPY. And now what we're doing is beta weighting my entire portfolio against the S&P 500, essentially seeing how my portfolio is going to move as SPY goes up or down. This is by no means perfect, but most stocks do tend to move in correlation to the S&P, and that's exactly what the beta is telling us. Beta is simply going to tell us how closely that stock typically moves in relation to the index. So for example, since we've been using Apple this entire time as the example, let's just pretend that Apple has a beta of 1.1. If that were the case and SPY were to go up 1%, this profile page would then assume that Apple is going to go up 1.1%. If SPY were to instead go down 2%, this tool would then assume that Apple's going to move down 2.2%. That is exactly what beta weighting is. It's going to use the past stock volatility to then make an educated guess on how it's going to move in relation to the index going forward. So again, it is by no means perfect. There are of course going to be times when the S&P goes up, but Apple goes down. Or when the S&P goes down, but Apple goes up. And that is known as alpha risk. The things that affect Apple alone are going to be alpha. So did they recently announce great earnings or a dividend increase or the CEO stepping down? All things that are going to affect Apple, but not the broad market. But okay, we now have a rough idea of how our portfolio is going to move as SPY goes up or down or as time passes or as volatility changes. So rather than just one symbol or one position, we're going to look at everything. Coming down here below and taking a closer look at our positions themselves, we do have to keep in mind that this isn't just looking at our open positions, it's also including hypothetical trades as well. If you ever just wanted to see the risk on your open active positions, we could come up here to the top where it does say show all at the moment, simply click on that, then come down here below to where it says hide simulations. You'll notice that it immediately removes all those hypothetical trades, so we don't see the hypothetical trade on Microsoft, on Apple, or on American Airlines in this list anymore. What that then means is right above here in the price slices, as well as the risk profile graph, is we are seeing the risk now for just our positions. We are seeing exactly how our current portfolio is going to move as SPY goes up or down. So coming over here to the price slices for just a second, if we were to look at our P&L right now, if SPY were to go up 10% from its current price, it were to go from 362 up to 399, our account is going to increase in value by 12,695 bucks. If instead SPY were to go down 10%, if it were to go down to 326 a share, we're going to lose 8700 bucks. So just keep that in the back of your mind. As of right now, if it goes up 10%, 12 grand in profit, down 10%, 8700 in losses. But now if we were to come over here and show our simulated trades, we can see how that's going to affect our current portfolio. So now coming back over here to the right, we can now see our P&L open if it goes up 10% is now only going to be 11,900 and our losses are going to be 8,200. So that is exactly what this page is for. To view our current risk, to see exactly how bullish or bearish we are or exactly how much we're going to make or lose if the market goes up or down, and then in order to manage that risk, we can put on hypothetical trades to see exactly how we want to counteract the risk. So to go through a practical example, let me actually come down here and delete all of my hypothetical trades that I currently have. So I'm going to come here and delete the American Airlines Iron Condor. I'm going to come down and delete the vertical on Apple. And I think the last one was this vertical on Microsoft. Coming back up here to the price slices, we can see our current portfolio Greeks. Starting with the Greek Delta, it looks like my overall portfolio is quite bullish. Right now, I've got a Delta of 292, which essentially means if SPY were to go up one point, I'm going to make $292 in my current portfolio. So that's great. If SPY starts to go up, I'm going to make $292. But if it goes down, I'm going to lose $292. 
Coming to the right, the Greek gamma is going to tell us how much more money we are going to make with every dollar move. So essentially it's saying the very first dollar SPY goes up, we're going to make 292 bucks. Then the second dollar, we're going to make $292.47, then $293, and so on. It's going to continually increase with every dollar move in SPY. To the right of that, the theta number is telling us how much we're losing every day that passes. So as of right now, because theta is a negative number, I'm losing about $8 a day due to time decay. Now, finally, the very last Greek in the list here is Vega, and that's telling me how sensitive I am to volatility. Since Vega is currently a positive number, it is telling me that I want volatility to increase. Every percentage increase in volatility is going to make me about $10.72. So bringing that all together, it is telling me that if SPY were to go up 10% in my current portfolio, I would roughly make about $12,500. So that sounds great. I would love to make $12,000 right now. However, if it goes down 10%, I'm going to be out about $8,800. So let's say we wanted to manage that in some way. We wanted to reduce our risk to the downside, essentially get ourselves some insurance or even reduce the overall delta. So reduce our bullish bias on this trade. Now, there are a lot of different strategies that we could put on to reduce this delta or to get negative delta, whether that be buying puts or selling call spreads or buying put spreads, a lot of different things we could do. But let's say besides just reducing delta, we also wanted to reduce our theta and actually get it positive if we could. So that will limit the strategies we can do quite a bit. We're trying to get a negative delta as well as get a positive theta. So for right now, we're just going to be putting on some short vertical call spread since I know it'll do exactly that. And since I want to manage the risk for my entire portfolio, we're going to be using credit spreads against SPY. So in order to do that, in order to build out some hypothetical trades, we're going to come back up here to the trade page. We're then going to be looking at the option chain for SPY. Let me go ahead and minimize everything I currently have open down here. And let's say we wanted to go out about 30 days in time. So we're going to pick the 28 October expiration here. And now that I've got that opened up, I can see a few of the available strikes right down the center here for SPY. And to keep things simple, we'll just be selling some right at the money vertical call spreads. So right here, we're going to be selling, it looks like the 363 call. And all I have to do is click on the bid price. So right here, $12 and three cents or now $12. Now that I've got the short call picked out, what I now need to do is buy a hedge. So essentially buy our protection. And for right now, I'm going to be going out about $5 out from the short call. In this example, that would be the 368 call. And in order to add that particular trade to our spread, we have to hold down the control key, then go ahead and click on the current asking price to buy that option. So currently 934. You'll then see as soon as I did that, it actually built out the vertical call spread down here below. So right here, I'm selling the 363, I'm buying the 368, and I'm doing so for a total credit of $2.62. In order to put that on my risk profile, in order to actually analyze it, all I have to do is right click anywhere on this red line, then come to the right of this little pop-up window and select analyze trade. What that did automatically and what you might not have noticed is it took us back to the risk profile and now that trade is going to be down here below in our list. So here is that hypothetical vertical call spread against SPY. Because it's such a small trade, because the theta and the delta is going to be so small, we might not even notice a change up here for the delta or theta. So at the moment, we still have a very positive delta, 286, as well as a very small negative theta. So we're still losing money every day that passes. But let's say what I wanted to do is try and reduce this delta as much as possible. And let's say I wanted to get it to actually delta neutral. Now, in order to do that with a short vertical call spread, it's going to be very difficult, meaning I'm going to have to be selling a lot of these, which I generally wouldn't want to do. But for example's sake, we're going to come down here and start boosting up the number of verticals that we're selling. Now, while I do this, while I hit the minus sign and continue to add short verticals, I want you to look at that delta and that theta number right there. You should notice that every time I click on that minus sign, the delta is getting smaller. And my theta number is now actually turning positive. So I'm now making money every day that passes. Now, if I keep doing this, if I keep clicking like crazy here, I'm going to do so until it gets me to delta neutral. 
So I would have to sell 46 vertical call spreads to get myself to a neutral delta and a theta of positive 32. So making about $32 a day due to time decay. What I've also done with that, if we were to look at the price slices on the right, I've essentially reduced all of that risk to the downside. Instead of losing about $8,000 now, if SPY were to go down 10%, I'm actually making 260 bucks. Now, unfortunately, by reducing all of that risk to the downside, what we've also done is reduced our upside potential. So now instead of being able to make $12,000 if SPY were to go up 10%, I'm now only going to make four grand. But that is what this tool is for. It's all about managing our portfolio risk to see exactly what's going to happen to our portfolio if things happen. Now, in this case, I might be entirely comfortable with that. I like the idea that now if SPY were to go down 10%, I'm not going to lose any money. And what I'm essentially saying is I am willing to give up that upside to protect myself to the downside. And that is all you're trying to do. Get yourself to an equilibrium where you're comfortable with the risk that you currently have on. If you were to come to this page and see you've got $30,000 of risk to the downside, if SPY were to go down 10% and you go, man, I am not comfortable with that risk. I am not okay losing $30,000. Well, that's exactly what this page is for. You could then come here and either see about maybe just reducing the size of some of your positions or just putting on new trades that are going to counteract that risk in some way, whether it be buying puts or selling spreads, whatever it takes. But that's exactly what this tool is all about. And if you were to come up here to our actual risk profile graph, we can essentially see the exact same thing, but maybe get a little bit more specific with it. So looking here at the risk profile graph, if we were to hold this thing till expiration, we're going to be looking at the blue lines. And right now we can basically see there are two points that we want SPY to go. Right here, it looks like if SPY were to go to about 345, that's kind of like the pinnacle point. That'd be where we make the absolute most amount of money. Now on the flip side of that, if SPY were to go up a crazy amount, if it were to go up all the way up to, it looks like about 412 or higher, we start to make even more money as SPY continues to go up. Where we would instead lose money in this portfolio is if SPY were to go up, but not up a crazy amount. So in this case, if SPY were to go up to 382, well, now our portfolio is losing money. We're not getting the pinnacle of success like we were if it were to go up a crazy amount or to stay around 345 or so. On the flip side of that, if SPY were to go down a crazy amount, so if we were to come over here to the left as well, we can see anything below about 310 would also cost us even more money as well. Now, I know that was a lot and I will continue to make videos on this since I know it can be quite confusing, but hopefully after all that, you do feel a lot more comfortable with the risk profile tab and how to use it to manage your overall portfolio risk. If you do still have questions or recommendations for other video topics, please let me know down below. And also, if you were looking to learn more, YouTube seems to think you'll find this next video helpful as well. So go ahead and check it out. But that's it for now. Have a great rest of your week, everyone, and I'll catch you on the next video.